parents and another relative in a single incident. Judy and Ben had two young children and Judy was pregnant. You always came over as being very strong, said Deborah, Ben's sister. Judy replied, I had to be strong for the children. Ben was not the husband I had married. Even the boys would say, Daddy used to play with us, and Daddy didn't after that. Although they lived in different times, Judy and Deborah supported each other. Judy's minister was always available. If I was worried about Ben, I had only to lift the phone and he was at my door. If I'd rung him in the middle of the night, he would have come to Ben. The organist in the church, she was very supportive. But the rest of the congregation didn't know what to say to us. Sometimes Ben left the house in the middle of the night. They feared he would harm himself. Deborah and her husband accompanied Judy's minister to look for Ben on those nights. We would find him in the graveyard, sitting on the grave. We saw the red tip of the cigarette. He was sitting on the grave, smoking. I didn't go in the graveyard, but my husband went in with the minister. It was so sad. Judy was raised in the Church of Ireland, but attended Ben's Presbyterian congregation after they married. She didn't become a Christian until after the incident, through attending mission meetings. I needed somebody to help me get through those days, and that's why I came to the mission. My parents prayed with me, and they helped a lot with the children. I needed God. I really did need somebody to cling on to. Through prayer, any worries that I had, I just put to him. Ben's faith was shattered. Judy explained. He said, there's no God to let a tragedy like that happen. Thankfully, before he died, he did return to God. He always would have talked to our minister, but he even said to him, there's no God to let the likes of that happen, which was understandable. Deborah, raised Presbyterian like her brother, later joined the Church of Ireland. She thought her Presbyterian congregation could have been more supportive. Maybe we didn't ask for it. Or maybe it appeared we didn't need it as much. It was friends and family rather than the church that helped. Not long after the incident, some of her family left the Presbyterian church for Reverend Dale Paisley's Free Presbyterian Church. While Deborah was not entirely sure, she thought it was in part because the Presbyterian Church was perceived as not responding well to the troubles. Her local Church of Ireland minister offered her more encouragement. I always remember the Church of Ireland minister saying, every year when the daffodils come out, that's when you remember them. Both said victims need ongoing support from their churches even years later. Judy said, around the anniversary, it would be nice to see something from the church to say, we were thinking of you. The minister, someone from the Presbyterian Women's Association, to say, we're saying a wee prayer. On the 25th anniversary, Judy asked her minister if the incident could be marked with the service. He said the service for that Sunday was all prepared. He didn't change the service, he just added it on. Deborah said he could have changed it to make it meaningful. Judy added, it wasn't an appropriate memorial service. He did let us take part, but we asked. Maybe the church should have said, do you want to hold a wee memorial service? On a more recent anniversary, the local Orange Lodge dedicated a memorial plaque. <coughs> Families
Family, friends and local clergy attended. Judy said, even the priest was there. Deborah added, the priest was the first one there and he was sitting on a picture of the Queen. <laughs> Judy said, it was nice they didn't forget about them. But then, that was the orange. Neither could think of anything the wider PCI had done to respond to the troubles. Deborah once attended an interchurch meeting for victims. It wasn't helpful. The speaker was preaching at me about reconciliation, and I was the one who had suffered. I obviously would have given reconciliation quite a lot of thought. I didn't need him coming, telling me what I ought to be doing. People don't understand. They have their own agenda.